to take on the ethical question. I don't know, this is probably a very um, scary thing um, to do. I, mean, I think there is a really growing, strong growing trend, particularly among younger investors, looking for strong ethical investments, and there's a number of green investment products that are around. When looking at those, I think it's really, and I'm not recommending any particular, I don't actually invest in any particular ones myself, although I've looked at some, it's really important as well to not look not just at their performance because there isn't a long history of their performance, but also their management fees and other things. But I think you, you, you've got a good point there, that, you know, I think people are looking now, not, I don't just, people don't just want to invest in the tobacco companies and the coal companies um, and the gambling companies that are going to leave them to the top returns. Um, I'm guessing here that you know you've asked that question for a reason, and there's probably a lot of people here in the audience who think simply you're wanting your money to make a difference um, for the returns, and there's certainly a lot of products out there that will deliver that for you. I'll just say that it's very hard to become financially independent without investing, so that comes as part of the journey. Um, but I suppose the thing is that. You can use capitalism to your advantage without being a mindless consumer in in the system, basically. So it's, it, it can be hard to reconcile, but you can make uh, ethical choices while still investing. And even though you're investing in those companies, you're not saying I love these companies. You're saying I'm investing in the future of Australia or in the future of the global economy because the global economy will grow over time. And if companies are doing the wrong thing, I believe personally that they'll be found out that they're doing the wrong thing because we live in an age where there's so much information that it's hard to keep the scandal under wraps for too long and eventually those companies will be found to be doing the wrong thing. And people, people make, they vote with their wallets, right? So I believe that companies you aren't doing something of value for society will eventually, but, is, but eventually fall by the wayside over time. Maybe that's a little idealistic, but... Yeah, and I think, you know, aside from investments, which, as um, Serena said, you can choose ethical options, there's other ways to give back and make the world a better place as well. If you have more time and if you're spending less money, you have other options available as well if you're interested. Make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to get back. <laughs> I, I'd probably just like to add that if your goal is indeed to be as ethical as possible, then avoiding what you consider to be unethical investments um, probably won't achieve that goal. Because um, at the end of the day, if all of the ethical people avoid all of the unethical companies in their investments, then only the unethical people will invest in those companies. Yeah, and given that there's less demand for those companies, they'll get those companies at very good valuations and they'll make all of this additional money <laughs> and not direct it towards ethical places. I mean, this is just broader, high, high thing. So, I mean, really the goal is just broad-based index investing um, and we don't want all of the ethical people making less money than the unethical people. <laughs> <laughs> Created uh, policy, 
right? They also created things like global colonization, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it just depends on the person. But the thing that's really interesting is that once you liberate the imagination, uh, human beings do extraordinary things, also extraordinarily evil things. <laughs>